30 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from uh, Connecticut, Mr. Himes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield to myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Madam Chair, I rise in support of the amended resolution, which demands provision to the Congressional Intelligence Committees of a whistleblower complaint which the acting DNI has withheld. The law, however, required the acting DNI to submit it to the committees. This is a serious matter, Madam Chair, for IC whistleblowing, congressional oversight, and the rule of law. Before turning to it, let me express my deep gratitude for the actions of a courageous and anonymous individual in the intelligence community. That person wanted to report urgent, credible allegations of serious wrongdoing and did the right thing by acting in strict accordance with proper whistleblower procedures. These permit classified disclosures to be made to the intelligence committees while protecting national security. Using that mechanism, in August, the whistleblower made a complaint to the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. According to the Justice Department's legal opinion regarding the complaint, which it today released to the public, the whistleblower's allegations concerned the content of a telephone call between President Trump and a foreign leader. The Inspector General determined the complaint to be urgent, meaning that the matter met important statutory criteria and that its allegations appeared to be credible. The Inspector General, months later, would write that the complaint's allegations not only fell, quote, within the DNI's jurisdiction, unquote, but that they, quote, relate to one of the most important and significant responsibilities to the American people, unquote. That is, protecting the United States from foreign interference in our elections. In strict accordance with the statutory rules, the Inspector General passed the complaint and his determination to the Acting Director of National Intelligence. The Acting Director was obligated, was obligated to forward this material to the Congressional Intelligence Committees within seven days of receipt. But in contravention of the law, he refused to do that. There can be no misreading of the provision imposing that obligation. It says that the DNI shall, shall forward the materials to the House Intelligence Committee and also to our colleagues at the Senate Intelligence Committee. Shall, of course, means shall. It does not mean can if you want to. Despite this unambiguous categorical directive, the Trump administration interfered with the time-tested process for IC whistleblowing. It would need to resist that process forcefully because, as public reports have suggested, the complaint potentially concerned the same craven abuse of power by President Trump, which the public learned about this morning. I won't recite all the details of this sordid episode, but suffice it to say that documents released today plainly show the President of the United States shaking down his Ukrainian counterpart for a, quote, favor, an investigation by Ukraine's authorities with close coordination by Rudy Giuliani and Attorney General Bill Barr into the son of former Vice President Joe Biden, the former Vice President himself being a candidate for the U.S. presidency. So the administration got the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel involved. It got the White House Counsel involved. And without invoking national security or making a claim of executive privilege, it managed to get a staggeringly flawed legal opinion from the Department of Justice. The opinion's reasoning is specious on its face. According to the Department of Justice, the whistleblower statute did not apply to the complaint, and the complaint therefore did not have to be forwarded to the committees because the complaint's allegations do not relate to an urgent concern, meaning the funding, administration, or operation of an intelligence activity under the DNI's authority and responsibility. In this regard, the DOJ observed that the alleged conduct was committed by the president, who is outside of and above the IC. I'll point out that that is irrelevant under the statute. All that is required is that the allegation, quote, relate to an intelligence activity within the DNI's purview. 
The DOJ also faulted the ICIG, the Inspector General, for not citing a statute or policy that gave the DNI operational responsibility to prevent foreign interference in our elections. Think about that for a second. Think about it. Having in mind what our country went through in 2016, when Russia undertook covert as well as overt measures to warp the U.S. presidential election and to sow discord, which the Trump campaign welcomed with open arms. With that recent history in mind, to say nothing of the rules on the books, we can easily dispose of the claim that the intelligence community, as captained by the acting DNI, has no operational role in keeping adversary governments from meddling in our democratic processes. That assertion is ignorant. It is wrong. And it bespeaks a serious misunderstanding about the DNI's authorities and the activities of the United States intelligence community. The DOJ's cramped view would come as news to President Trump, I suspect, given the executive order he issued in September of 2018 regarding foreign interference in our elections, which requires the DNI, after every federal election in this country, to assess whether such interference has taken place and to report his assessment to the rest of the executive branch. That sounds a lot like a serious role for the DNI to me. I imagine the Department of Justice's view would also come as a shock to the acting DNI himself. After all, by statute, the DNI is the head of the U.S. intelligence community and the principal intelligence advisor to the president and the National Security Council, among other things. And as the Inspector General correctly noted, one mission of the intelligence community, among its core missions, is to protect the United States against hostile intelligence activities directed against it. That would include any hostile foreign intelligence activities associated with efforts by foreign adversaries to interfere in our elections. So I am stunned that the acting DNI would accept legal advice like this, which strains to minimize or ignore the functions and responsibilities that the DNI carries out, or at least I hope, routinely. I'm also stunned that the ODNI would acquiesce in advice that if permitted to stand would do such extraordinary damage. By conferring on the DNI the discretion to opt out of what is plainly mandatory, the Department of Justice neutered a statute governing intelligence community whistleblowing, overturned years of consistent practice, and most damaging of all, called into doubt important protections from reprisal on which this whistleblower relied and other lawful whistleblowers in the IC have relied. I can only imagine the chilling effect that the Department of Justice's approach will have on lawful IC whistleblowing and thus on the Intelligence Committee's ability to conduct oversight of intelligence activities. Madam Speaker, let me end with a note about the state of play which is fluid, to say the least. I understand that the executive branch may make some of the whistleblower's materials available to the committee this afternoon, but the details remain sketchy, and the committee may not yet receive, in complete and unredacted form, all the information that the acting DNI is obligated to furnish by law and that we have sought by subpoena. The committee will settle for nothing less. However the situation is resolved, Madam Speaker, the House has no choice but to denounce the extraordinary lengths to which the White House and Justice Department have gone to cover up and obstruct. I strongly support the resolution as amended, and I urge my colleagues to join me. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen, reserves. For what purpose?